The K-3 uh, reading reform in Mississippi really began in 2013 when the legislature uh, adopted the law and there was a great amount of support from uh, the governor of the state uh, and from the legislature and from the Department of Education in really trying to address the historical uh, problem in the state with uh, uh, significantly um, deficient uh, reading performance levels and, and really the legislature and the leadership of the state uh, really just at that point sort of drew a line in the sand, if you will, and really pushed for uh, the key reform, I think, uh, to turn the state around long term, to, to drive the state to have a more educated workforce, and that was to raise the literacy level. So the state really uh, made a commitment, uh, I would say, at the heart of the matter, which was um, to get kids off to the right start. And so the law was passed in 2013, and over the last couple years, it's been implemented in phases the Department of Education uh, was charged with implementing uh, a series of trainings for teachers, interventions, beginning to intervene with kids who were identified with reading deficiencies, screening for kids who were identified uh, or identifying those kids with reading deficiencies, and building up the policy over a couple years until this year when the last piece of the policy, what we refer to as a, a uh, last resort retention piece of the policy finally kicked in where students are tested, uh, they get multiple chances to take this test, but they're tested to determine whether they're ready at the third grade level to progress to fourth grade. Uh, so students have to identify or have to demonstrate that they meet a certain reading score that means they're ready for the coursework in fourth grade. Fourth grade's a, a key time for these students because fourth grade is when you go from learning to read to reading to learn. As chairman of the Senate Education Committee, uh, we, we put together a bill to put this uh, bill into place, the Third Grade Literacy Promotion Act, and I worked with members of the Senate Education Committee and the governor's office, lieutenant governor and the speaker and the House members uh, to make this a priority because uh, Mississippi uh, we do have a lot of poverty and, and with that it's uh, have a challenges in teaching young people to read uh, across our state. Uh, I think based on our NAEP scores we're probably 25 percent or less are proficient in reading. And based on our state test scores about half are, are third grade uh, readers in, in terms of proficiency. So we knew this was uh, important for us to address this issue and, and especially based on the data that 88% uh, of high school dropouts were non-proficient readers in third grade. So we felt like if we wanted to improve graduation rates, decrease uh, dropout rates, that this was an efficient way, an effective way to um, address those issues. We passed the legislation and then we followed up and, and provided money to our State Department of Education to hire literacy reading coaches in those schools of greatest need. And they were um, went out into the field and working with the young people in those elementary schools. We had some areas where uh, 85% of the elementary students in third grade were non-proficient readers based on our Mississippi test. It's probably more than that if you had a national uh, test used. But additionally, we uh, in, uh, required a kindergarten readiness assessment that uh, early on addressed th those students who needed intervention early, and, and we could measure that based on that kind of kindergarten readiness assessment. Another thing that we did is provided money to, uh, for training professional development. We trained over 10,000 teachers and principals over the past year and we will continue to do that to make sure that they have the skills available uh, to teach reading in our uh, K through three grades. One thing that we did uh, that was different than we had done before, uh, actually there's two that I can think of. We, I knew that we needed uh, more help around the state because the State Department uh, had so few people working in the State Department to help all of our districts. So we hired uh, a lot of professionals all around our state in reading and math and early childhood uh, as well as special education because I wanted schools to be in districts to be able just to reach out whenever they needed help uh, in a classroom. 
And so our regional service delivery model was one of the things that we did. We also uh, scheduled parent meetings around the state. We had not done that before. Uh, and we held those all around the state and taught the parents not only about the Literacy-Based Promotion Act, but also gave them a wealth of resources of what they could uh, what they could be doing at home. We created these really nice cards, if you will, uh, that uh, laminated, that had the Literacy-Based Promotion Act uh, on them. We wanted to make sure that parents knew what the consequences would be, uh, you know, if their children did not pass this test at the end of the year. We also, I was out speaking to all of our superintendents early on, saying to them, here are the essence of and the essentials of the Literacy-Based Promotion Act. So within the first 30 days of school, all of your principals are to be mailing home letters to parents so the parents knew right off the bat whether their children were or were not at risk of failing. And we also knew that they needed to be communicating with them quarterly. So we have been out and about in our special ed community, working with our ELL community, making sure that they also knew the good cause exemptions, but also knew what all of the rules and regulations were that were a part of the act. A lot of our districts have started employing their business partners uh, to come in and read to individual children or to work with small groups of children. Uh, there has been a lot of uh, emphasis on making sure that our schools have enough books. Some of our businesses have donated additional reading materials to our schools. I think our parents are a critical element. Uh, we have them for basically six and a half hours a day and they have them the rest of the time. So we need to make sure that we're putting materials in our, in our, uh, excuse me, in our parents' hands that they can use at home. The website that we created, we have uh, put a lot of resources up there so that parents can have easy access to that. And I think some parents know how to navigate the system well and others need the help to know how to navigate the system in order to know how to help their children. So we needed to make sure that they had what they needed at all grade levels in order to, to benefit the children when they had them at home. The impact on the Literacy Act at Nettleton Primary has been tremendous. Uh, over the past few years, Nettleton Primary, we were not known as a, uh, a very high performing school. Uh, I wouldn't say we were a low performing school, but we were middle of the road. Uh, and, and this was something that when we jumped on it, asked our teachers, I said, I want you to believe in me, I want you to believe in what we're doing, and that if we do this, and we give 100% every day, I promise you when, when it shakes out in the end, we will be on top. And then when the time came this year, uh, on our kindergarten MCAS score, uh, our district out of 144 districts in the state, we ranked fifth on kindergarten MCAS, and out of 144 districts, we ranked third in the pass rate on the third grade reading gate test. Uh, so that immediately uh, it catapulted us to the top of the state in uh, the new reform, uh, in the new assessments, uh, and it was all due to being proactive, being willing to think out of the box, being willing to change and, and say, we're not going to continue to do things the way we've always done them because we will get the same results. We have to look at the way we assess, we have to look at the way we report assessment, and we have to do this with fidelity, and it has definitely paid off for us.